Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you guys are around the world. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. And first off, I just want to thank all of you guys who do leave comments on my videos. Sometimes you guys make my day, sometimes you guys hurt my feelings, but sometimes the very, very few of you actually manage to do both. Uh, so thanks to this guy on screen. I've <laughs> Just thank you. And uh, anyway, let's get into the news. And the first of which revolves all around Optic Gaming. For all of you who do care about the North American organization who has now gone full European with one of their rosters, they now apparently have a secondary CSGO roster in the making, which being all Indian roster. Now, of course, the premise, we've talked about this, a country of 1.4 billion people narrowing down that selection to a CSGO team of just five makes a lot of sense in theory, but apparently just 1,400 applicants, which is still a great number of applicants and tryouts to have for a team. And in most CSGO teams out there, we see they may be trialed two or three members. So to have 1,400 applicants, of course, from a very large country, though, it's going to be very curious to see how this actually works out because in CSGO's past, we have not seen too many teams, if any teams, really do this kind of tryout where they actually draw in uh, all members of uh, one country in itself, and they do try out over 1,400 members. As of right now, they are now down to eight people. They will be finalizing that roster, we believe, sometime next week. So expect that sometime soon. I still beg the question, after seeing highlight videos and so on and so forth of the team, it's probably not expected for these guys to be much better than many teams in the tier two to tier three scene out there, but I still want to beg the question, is it possible for these five guys to somehow be better than the main optic roster? It definitely begs the question, but most likely not. I, I know a lot of you guys don't expect too much from this Indian roster, and that's probably what should be expected. But nonetheless, guys, Optic Gaming, I can confirm someone actually who was at the event watching reached out to me via Twitter. They said the final stages of the tryouts were actually held at LXG, a gaming cafe in India as well. So it's a very official event. And again, Optic Gaming still doing some things that are downright, you know, kind of unfathomable. Many teams are not going to do this kind of thing, so it's great to see they should have a secondary roster sometime soon. The real question is, though, how good will they truly be, and will it end up being an embarrassing move for Optic? And also, in big news, if you guys did miss Richard Lewis's video about the new Valve rule for the next face at major, as well as any major after that face at major, I'll link that video down below, pretty much addressing the new hidden rule that no one really talked about. On top of that, also addressing organizations out there like Refresh and ES Force, who have obvious financial ties to multiple teams out there, and the premise of his video, of course, was calling out uh, obviously a great move by Valve to make that new rule and stated and that new rule pretty much says you should not as an organization have financial ties or any ties to multiple teams who are competing at the major and you guys know exactly why that could be an issue in the future especially with tournaments out there like ESL Pro League and ECS and any big money tournaments like the major itself if there's any way where you have multiple teams who can actually influence a different result for your own financial benefit that of course should be against the rule so it makes sense going forward ever since the face of major will start uh, in September as well going forward every major after that will of course follow this rule which does make great sense but it does beg the question companies out there like ES forces as well as refresh entertainment who do apparently have multiple ties to multiple teams out there who will compete at the major make us ask the question what will happen when will they actually address these issues and of course Richard Lewis talks about that in his video he goes on to talk about ES force being the main company that we know of they certainly they definitely have ties to SK gaming and Virtus Pro both teams who should be at the major or at least the major qualifiers as well as maybe ties to Navi so maybe ES Force will have to address that in the future and we hope to hear about that sometime soon on the channel here as well but he also addresses Refresh Entertainment now many of you guys know Refresh as the owners of Astralis uh, of course they gave partial ownership to the Astralis players they also own other organizations out there like Heroic and Norse and that's a different topic to talk about because you guys know Heroic doing quite well as of late they could make the major qualifier certainly and the major given that despite how recent results have gone and especially even with team changes they're doing quite well as a team so that's another issue to address for the on. But Refresh also is speculated to have ownership of Godsend. They were actually trying to sell part of their ownership of Godsend a while ago, or at least we thought they were. Refresh has actually made a direct response to Richard Lewis. Richard Lewis has not, at the point of me recording this, made a response as of right now, but Refresh has made a post, I'll link the article down below, uh, through Esports Kingdom, and apparently has denied any ownership of Godsend and their organization. Now we know from a long time ago it was actually Pronax alongside another partner. His name was Thomas Martin. These are the only two owners of, of Godsend that we know as of late, and apparently Refresh has no ties at least what they've said is they have no ownership ties now it's also been speculated that they do actually have some media rights inside of Godsent, which you could beg to you know you could obviously beg to, to the fact that that is a financial tie and of course an incentive to maybe have some different results there now again the only there really is no big issue of apparent right now obviously Godsent is most likely not going to qualify for anything near the major of course we could be wrong we see upsets every single time uh, we have minors and minor qualifiers come around every single major it seems we have some 
some team slip through, but I, I highly doubt Godson will be one of those teams. Uh, even more importantly, it would be Refresh Entertainment and their, and their statements coming sometime soon about what they'll do with their ownership with the Strauss and Heroic if Heroic do actually manage to go through. But as of right now, Refresh Entertainment has denied ownership of Godsent. We're waiting for replies from Richard Lewis. I'm sure he'll post a video sometime soon. But as of right now, that was their statement and all articles will be linked down below. So we'll see what organizations out there come forward as, as well as Refresh, ES Force, other uh, organizers. I think those are the main two organizations or, or corporate organizations that actually have ownership of multiple teams. What will they do with the major when it comes that time? We're going to wait and see how many teams are actually sold off for what could be steals of prices. And also, for everyone who was excited about the 3D Max return, if you guys did not hear, of course, one of the most legendary teams in terms of stickers, they had some of the coolest stickers in the game back in 2014, 2015, before they left the scene itself. Apparently, 3D Max has returned to the scene. People excited about two things. Of course, first off, will they have a CSGO roster? It seems, as of right now, do not get your hopes up. It seems, uh, for now, they're only going to have a PUBG team. At least, that's what they've signed. But also kind of exciting as well, it's people kind of speculated uh, they could have a French CSGO roster if they do. Could they sign, of course, Shocks and Company? Whoever Shocks, Smiths in existence, want to have joined their roster. I would say highly doubtful. I'm sure you guys are well aware that would be a, quite the investment. And of course, G2 right now makes the most sense because they already have contracts with at least one of the players they might want on that team, that being Kenny S. And they do have, uh, of course, ties to the rest of those guys as well and, and could get some great sponsorships. It, the money makes sense for G2 most often. And 3D Max coming back with only a PUBG team, I don't think they, they're financially sound enough to invest in these guys. But people actually expect that because when they did come back they released themselves as apparently a French PUBG team they're now a French organization located outside of Paris so they could have a French CSGO roster coming soon who knows what's in the future plans of 3D Max if you guys want to reach out to me for an interview I'd love to have you guys on the show but I would say it's highly doubtful right now they'll be returning to CSGO and if they do it will not probably be the roster you want to see but still kind of cool their stickers might be back in the future and very last of today's episode of CSGO News guys thank you all for watching first off I am doing a knife giveaway with Raffle One I'll link the knife giveaway down below. It's free to enter. All you guys have to do is retweet and like. And also, because you guys are watching the video, do me a favor. For an extra entry, reply to the tweet with anything, any sentence involving the word cheese, okay? Don't tell anyone else. It's a secret, guys. For an extra entry, just reply to the tweet down below and then retweet and like and, of course, follow them. It's a free giveaway for you guys to enter and reply with that uh, to that tweet with anything involving cheese. As always, guys, hope you all enjoyed. Very lastly as well, I wanted to touch on SK Gaming changes. I know you guys have seen them struggle, at least online, ECS and ESO Pro League. Of course, they were not relegated. They just still did fine in the end, um, but obviously struggling online, doing okay on land. They also also making some changes IGL-wise. Apparently, Fallen is their IGL on Inferno and Cash. According to Cold Zero, he's actually the IGL on every other map besides Inferno and Cash. So SK Gaming continuing to make changes uh, with that roster, of course, with Stewie 2K. We'll see how that works out for them in the future. Of course, ESO so Pro League Finals going on today as well, and they are still in it. We'll see how the IGL change works. Hope you guys all enjoy. I will see you all back here tomorrow or sometime soon with more CSGO news. And uh, yeah, I'm Jake. Love, love. Bye. And the first of which revolves all around Opti Gaming. For all of you guys who do care, they will be having a secondary CSGO roster. It's pretty much legit and pretty much fully confirmed as of right now. Talking to people out there, I was luckily able to actually reach out to someone uh, via Twitter. They reached out to me and actually talked about, they actually went, then <laughs> actually... Of course, I love repeating the same words every single set.